Hey there, so I'm gonna show you how to put together and fill in our ATP foldable. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to start by folding this over. Um, I don't wanna fold it completely in half. Basically what I wanna do is fold it so that the directions end up on one side and then our ATP molecule is on the other side. So it's not completely in half, but it's folded in half. Um, and then I'm just going to make that a really good crease. And then I'm going to cut or tear along the crease to separate my instructions from my ATP molecule. I'm just going to set the instructions aside. So here is my ATP molecule. I'm going to fold it in half again. And this time, I am going to fold it completely in half. So right like that. There we go. So there it's folded in half. And then I'm going to use my scissors. And I'm just going to kind of cut off this extra bit right there. Okay. And then just recycle the extra paper. So this is my ATP molecule and zoom in just a smidgen. There we go. So this is my ATP molecule. This part of the ATP molecule is called adenine. And the adenine connects to the sugar and specifically, this is a ribose sugar. Again, I know it's a sugar because it ends in O's. So adenine connects to ribose. The ribose then connects to the first phosphate. So phosphate one, which connects to phosphate two, and then connects to the third phosphate. So now that I have my bonds, I actually have my ATP molecule. Um, I am going to color it in. So I'm gonna color my adenine green. Try to do my best to stay in the lines here. There we go, so there's my adenine, it's green. And then I'm gonna color my ribose sugar blue. Right here, like this one. So color in my sugar ribose. There we go. And then I'm gonna color my three phosphates orange. And I'm coloring these in, one, so that it kind of stands out in my notebook, but number two, so that I recognize that these are three different parts of the ATP molecule. All right, ribose is a sugar, adenine is a nucleic acid, and then, of course, we have our three phosphates. So these are our three parts to our ATP molecule. Now, we know that ATP is the energy source for the cell. Specifically, the energy is stored in this uh, last bond, right? So the bond between the second and third phosphate is where specifically the energy is stored. So I have labeled it, and now I'm just gonna kind of use my yellow colored pencil to make this energy stand out, right, like that. Perfect. So there is my energy molecule. So when we have enough energy, we have an ATP molecule. But let's say we want to use that energy. We want to move our muscles, blink our eyelids, have our brain function. 
what our body will do is it will sever that third phosphate. And by cutting this bond, we are releasing the energy so that it can be used by our body to function, you know, to blink our eyelids, to move our mouth, for our muscles to work. So when we have the full molecule with all three phosphates, the energy is stored. When we sever that last bond, the energy is released. All right. I'm going to open up my foldable. So inside, I'm going to take a few notes, things that I need to know. Um, the first thing is that ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Right? ATP. Adenosine triphosphate. And it is made of the adenine base, a ribose sugar, and three phosphates. Uh, the second thing I need to know is that the highest energy bond is between, oops, sorry, started to misspell that, is between the second and third phosphates. Okay, that's where the energy is stored, that bond between the second and third phosphates. Um, I need to know that ATP is made in the mitochondria, right? We've known since elementary school, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Well, it's the powerhouse because we, it is making the ATP. And then more specifically, ATP is made during respiration. And we've talked about respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Both of those processes make ATP. Now aerobic, of course, makes more ATP um, and then anaerobic makes much less. Um, part E, ATP, is needed for all cellular activities. Again, anything that our, that our body needs for plants and animals. So for animals, things like muscle contraction, um, you know, active transport to move molecules in and out of our cells. Um, for plants, things like bioluminescence, so any type of cellular activity needs to be powered by ATP. Um, and then finally, an analogy to help us remember ATP. So ATP is like a rechargeable battery. So how is ATP made? Well, just like a rechargeable battery, in the beginning, I start fully charged, All right? So here's my battery, fully charged with ATP. So I am fully charged. There we go. Fully charged. But then my body goes and it uses that energy. So energy is used by the cell. We use up some of that energy living, breathing, digesting. 
So we still have a battery, but instead of a TP, we have a DP. Because in order for energy to be used, we know that we are going to sever that bond between the second and third phosphate, and this creates adenosine diphosphate. So the battery has been uh, drained, right? It's not full anymore, right? So we've got an empty battery. But we can recharge that battery. We can add energy from glucose, right? Through cellular respiration, I can eat food that contains glucose and through cellular respiration, we can make ATP energy. Then we go and we use the energy again, battery gets low, and thus the cycle continues over and over again. Let's make sure now that our foldable is complete, that we glue the foldable into our notebook, right like this. So I now have both my ATP notes right next to my cellular respiration notes in my notebook, okay? That's it for today. If you have any questions about the uh, shape or structure of ATP or how ATP is made or used, please be sure to let me know.